Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist, but I've been practicing orthodontics now for, since 1970. Uh, I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society. Now, this is a society of general and pediatric dentists, and our sole purpose is teaching other general dentists and pediatric dentists orthodontics, just like any other dentist that's interested in studying orthodontics. Uh, come, you can come to the American Orthodontic Society, and we have a lot of wonderful instructors that are dedicated to teaching good solid orthodontics and you can learn it now you're not going to learn it in one weekend or a whole bunch of weekends but you you we encourage people to keep studying and working it as long as they're teaching it uh, but uh, you have to make that decision for yourself. Uh, today I'm going to go through a, a show you an appliance that I came up with uh, years ago and I named it uh, David the Mitchell Appliance. Uh, Dr. David Mitchell was the head of the orthodontic department at Emory University in Atlanta for I think about 17 years and I got to know him uh, while he was still head of the department and he had spoken to our group over in Atlanta and uh, later on down the line David uh, dropped out of teaching the there and he came and taught with me on, uh, on several occasions. He would come to where we had a, a teaching facility there in our home in Grapevine. And he, he and I went several places and put on seminars together. And he's a very smart man. And he helped me get going and develop my orthodontic training along with many other people that helped me. So let's get into this uh, deal. Uh, it, uh, it is an appliance that's made really to correct class 2 malocclusions and this is where if a kid or anybody doesn't wear their elastics, if they you put this appliance on there and they don't wear the elastics, well, their all their front teeth will just get just push out. These teeth right here will come forward. These springs on the side will just bring these teeth forward, push the motors backwards, of course. Uh, but it'll push it out there. And I had one kid that wouldn't wear them, and it did. Uh, let me go back on that one and take that off. Uh, now, the idea, just to, to ignore this, uh, this happened to be on this type of dot. This is an uprighting spring, and you just push that, and I think I've got a whole video on that. This spring is down here somewhere, and you bring it up and hook it, hook it up there, and it'll just set that motor right up like that. That's an easy thing to do for us now. So just ignore that. And this is not a class two type of dot, but I'm going to show you what we put on here. Now you you put a good solid arch wire in the bottom as good as you can to get it stabilized because you're going to be pulling on the uh, with class 2 elastics. This arch wire right up here you have to get this straightened out for a while uh, but we put a rectangular 
arch right across here and it comes up and this goes through this auxiliary tube that I'm recommending that you have. You have a conventional slot right here that uh, takes conventional arch wire and also you've got a headgear tube here and you have a same size slot here. Now I use 018 uh, arch uh, brackets and this wire is usually a 1725. Uh, that means it's it's a 17 uh, millimeters or 17 and it, and it's 25 that way. Uh, so it fits this slot and also that slot with here. You have one degree play in between there so the thing will slip through. And then we put a spring on here and then we'll put a certain amount of pressure in there. Let me get on to some pic pictures that may show that a little better. Now we use a lock nut to you have this spring on your arch wire and you put that lock nut and you push this arch this lock nut back and tighten it down at say 10 uh, millimeters uh, 10 grams of uh, force in here and lock it down then you well first you put an elastic on in the case and if this rubber band has say 12 grams of force in it then you put 10 grams of force on the spring that's uh, kind of confusing to you we'll show it to you a little uh, further down the line and it corrects the class 2 problem now this little lock nut now if you're using rectangular wires in here boy it really locks it down it'll squeeze into that corner of the rectangular wire and it won't move at all now you operate the lock nut with a allen wrench it's a it's a real small allen wrench you can buy them at a good hardware store uh, and if you buy it through rocky mountain or wherever you buy these uh, lock nuts. I think Rocky Mountain was where I uh, got these. Uh, back when I bought these they were about five dollars a piece or more. Now I don't know they probably charge you six or seven or eight dollars for one of these lock nuts. But they're not you can use them over again, sterilize them and go. And the little Allen wrench they charge twelve dollars which you can buy one for uh, fifty cents or something like that using a, a hardware store so uh, Allen wrenches but this one's got a long handle and it's nice and all that uh, but you don't have to have that to do this with it now so we take a, a Dotrix gauge this this gadget right here is a scale of grams uh, takes 30 grams to make an ounce and uh, this little scale you can measure grams by pushing it in and it'll measure it here or on the other end you can pull out on it and it'll measure up to uh, 30 grams in that way uh, well it takes 30 grams to make an ounce I think this thing I forget just how many it measures but it's a it, you really have to get one of these Dotrix gauges if you're doing orthodontics you just need one of them and you put that spring on there then I tell come back and bend that arch wire down at the tail end so if it comes loose up here the spring won't just shoot the whole arch wire and it'll come up to this point and stop you see 
right there. And now we see where we have to go with this to get so many grams of force on it. And then you lock it down with this instrument. You take it and put it in there and twist it, lock the thing down. You can actually slide the lock nut itself when you go in there to do that. That sounds a lot real complicated, but it's not. Now, I've blown this picture up a good bit, and you can have a conventional arch wire in there till you get ready to activate and do this thing. Then you want to just take this thing out, you know, take it out. Now, this is the 1725 arch wire, and the spring has been push back here it would be way out here see and uh, you push it back till you get uh, whatever force you've got on the rubber band going in you put two grams less force on this than you have on the elastic I've got you all confused here but just stay with me it, it, it works. Man, it does work. Now, here is the uh, doctor's gate. I mean, the, with the Allen wrench we've got, and we have it loose, and we push it back with the scale of the doctor's gauge. And when we get what we want, we tighten this nut down, and it stays there. And this spring is pushing all the time. So it's pushing from this motor here back from the six-year motor, it's shoving everything here back in this direction, and it's pushing these four front teeth out in this direction with, say, this is uh, 10 uh, grams of force spread this this way and this way. It's 10 grams this way and 10 grams this, uh, toward the front, and you lock this thing down. And then you've got to engage the arch wire up here at the front of the mouth. And if you didn't do anything, you've got an expanding wire in here that's going to shove these front teeth out in this direction. It'll also shove the motors back in that direction. It's amazing what this thing does. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, maybe we can understand it a little better let go here it is looking in from the top uh, this is the arch wire kind of steps down and you engage these four teeth with it you see and as you do you have to back it up and when you back it up it tightens up the spring that's in here or you put it in and engage this and now do the the spring but brother it's going to move these teeth out and move these back and you leave it alone and it'll do that and it's amazing how all of these teeth follow and go where this arch wire even though they're not tied in when we activate all right there it is uh, in here you're going to take this out though when you activate that take that arch wire completely out you've had it in there to line the teeth up and everything all right now you really uh, hook it up you can put it in here and just hook it up without activating this and see what force is on this elastic when you bring it up here and hook it on the cuspid tooth or actually I like to get it uh, put a hook on the arch wire up here and you see how much force is on that rubber band and now you see this 12 grams on the rubber band you would push this back and stop it at 10 grams so there's less force in here pushing this apart than there is on the elastic which is bringing the whole thing back. Now, so you've got two grams more force on the elastic than there is on the spring. Now, a lot of people 
Look at this thing. It's too darn complicated. But man, it works if you want. I'm going to show you what, what it does. Now, a lot of times, you've got somebody that's got a tongue habit or maybe a stout lip that's pushing back. So I put a lower lip bumper in here. And it doesn't touch the tissue here at all. But the lip, when you swallow and everything, goes against the lip bumper, and it pushes all this back. It's tied together in here. So it's an excellent uh, pliers to put in. Now, here it is rigged up, and you can go back and study it. Now, this is when you're ready to go with it. You take the other arch wire out. There's nothing in here except this is this arch wire, which is fitting pretty tightly into the brackets up here. It goes over the brackets and goes back. Here's a little nut, a lock nut that pushes the spring, and the spring goes in this auxiliary tube part back on the six-year molar, and it's pushing back with ten and grams and forward with 10 grams the same thing but the elastic has 12 grams in it and so if the person wears the elastic this doesn't move anything forward that goes backwards but if they don't wear this elastic man these teeth will start moving out and it makes the teeth hurt so if you don't put the elastic on or don't wear it, these teeth will begin to hurt up here. They're being pushed out with 10, they're being pushed forward with 10 grams of force. And that's, uh, uh, that's not all that much, but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a third of a pound there. So anyway, I will erase that. Now here we're putting the elastic, uh, I think I put this picture in, so you see, this is one end of the doctrix gauge, and we showed the other one. And these, this uh, doctrix gauge is something, if you're going to do orthodontics, you really need to buy and then gum doctrix gauge. I don't know what they ch charge you, 10 prices for them now, I'm sure, but you just need one. You hook it here. And you start pulling on it, and there are little rings on the doctrix gauge. Uh, and as you go, each ring is an ounce, uh, and you'll have it marked off in four ounces, eight ounces, twelve ounces, and sixteen ounces. You see, and that's a pound. Now we keep. We put this rig up. That's the way it looks on there. There's another view of it. You just remember, you got to take this arch wire. That's the one you straightened everything out. Because you got to get straight enough to where you can engage a rectangular wire across here. And then you can put it on. It doesn't matter about what's going on in here or down here, except you want to. You work up down on the bottom to a good solid arch wire because this is going to be pulled in a forward direction. This will come in a forward direction and this is going to go in a distal direction. So uh, you really need to have something pretty good on there before you start putting your class 2 mechanics on. Now in this case this is pulled up in a Class two relation. This, this arch wire really needs to go back and be tucked in back here so it won't slide out if it comes undone at the front. Now, on some cases, to get a, a really solid anchor back here at the back, we'll put a little strip of this triad acrylic, just bond it to the surface of the teeth and make it where it takes away all the inner digitation. Then class twos are easier to fix if you don't have to go up and down the uh, 
and you're pushing the upper teeth back here and the upper tooth fits in like this and the lower tooth is down like like uh, something like this I don't know why these things come up and bother me. And you got to jump this over in class two. If somebody really chews hard, uh, correcting the class two is difficult because you can't push them over the hump here. So if you just fill this up with something and this point sitting on there, it slides easy and the class two will go easier. And I don't think I use that on this young lady I will show you in a minute okay here it is set up and pulled out and make it look like a class 2 on the type of dot alright this <coughs> case that I'm uh, going to show you uh, it's on a, a young lady she's 17 years old and she's not a little bitty kid I mean she's about as tall as I uh, I am, or I was, and uh, we rigged this thing up completely and set it on her. Now you can see she's got a kind of a retreated chin, just a little bit. You need to, you want this chin to come out some and make it look better. Now she has a good vertical height of the face, no problem there. You have to be very careful you put this on a high angle or somebody the chin gave way down like that because uh, it would tend to increase the vertical dimension of the face but here's this uh, a real nice girl and this is her models and you can see she's got about a quarter of an inch class 2 over jet and uh, good bit over by it. it's too the bite's too closed and of course you got a over jet that's more than it should be and you go back here and look at the molars the upper molars coming in like this and the lower molar is back behind the lower molar is behind it in other words and that makes these points these they don't interdigitate properly so this ought to go back now to where this red dot here on the cuspid, that is the tip of the cuspid, ought to be down in this little groove right here. Same thing on the other side. She's got about the same amount of class 2 problem on both sides of the mouth. And so we're going to rig this deal up on her and look at what happens now if you think class 2 elastics don't don't move the teeth out just watch that these teeth are lined up here I should have put that little strip of acrylic down through here but just remember they're straight now but after wearing this for a little while this molar even though it's got an arch wire in it is tilted out in this direction let me I'll show you that in a minute and the upper of course we don't line all this stuff up there so that's no problem so it was all lined up when we started you see so she came in and we had it in a, a large round wire but I can engage a rectangular wire into these bracket slots and either those ceramic brackets and I don't like the darn things but uh, people want them and so we use them uh, now it's all the way in on the now this is an 018 round wire it's just a round wire in a, a rectangular bracket but it fits in there. Now I'm going to take that out. Now this is going to be a rectangular wire that fills that bracket up that we put in. I know for some of you that's been doing a lot of orthodox, I'm bored and you to death, but you can just go over it. But I want to 
have this where anybody can learn it. All right, there's what we start with. We got a class two case like that. And then from several angles. Look at it from the front, it's lined up, but it's class two. Now we've got to, we're going to correct that class two problem. And that's what this thing does, and it does a good job of it. Now, again, looking at the bottom, I just want you to know how it is. Now this tooth is lined up back here, and uh, I think this deal we hook up further back on it some way or another. All right, here we come in with the elastic and we hook it up. So I put a put this rectangular wire in here. It's fitting in the bracket. It doesn't fit in the bracket of the cusp. It comes out in front of it. It comes up over it. It goes back like that. It doesn't contact the cuspid at all right now. We soldered some little hooks on it because I didn't want to have to lace this together. So it's just pulling these four teeth right here back with this elastic and I think the rubber band we had on her had about, uh, about 12 ounces of force in it. Uh, and about 12 ounces of force in here. And so we put 10 ounces of force on these lock nuts here. So this is like 24 ounces of force are backing these teeth up, except that we've got 10 ounces on each side, or 20 ounces is pushing these teeth forward, but the rubber band cancels out the 20 ounces and we've got 24 ounces on the rubber band. So we actually have four ounces of force that are moving the whole blooming maxilla backwards. I mean, it's moving it distal. It's correcting the class two problem. Now, if you don't and let's watch what's happened here on this case. Uh, uh, the, the girl, we put it on and told her to wear it. She had to wear the rubber bands. If she didn't, these teeth would go coming out just like mad, you know. So she's got to wear the rubber bands. Well, she wore the rubber bands. She wore them. And I said, I want you to come back in here in two weeks. Well, Two weeks went by and she didn't come back and she didn't come back in four weeks. Seemed like it was about six weeks. That's a kind of a blurred picture there, but that's that's the appliance rigged up and going on her right now. See this arch wire didn't touch it, it came above the cuspid bracket and went back and none of these teeth in here were attached to anything from the cuspid back through the two bicuspids which weren't attached. All right. Here it is, rigged up in her mouth and showing that. Now this point of this cuspid, we wanted to go back into this slot. That's where we're trying to go. That's class one. And we're trying to put that in that slot. And brother, it put it in there. <laughs> Now, the lady came back, I think it was instead of two weeks, I think it was six weeks or something like that that she came back. She came back and sat down in the chair, and we had an intruding wire on there, and the rubber bands were still in her mouth on the teeth back here. This arch wire, these four front teeth had come back and drop down behind the f lower front teeth and the wire fell into the slot of the cuspid tooth. You can see it right there. There's the cuspid. As it dropped down, it originally was going like that. Now it's down here. So these teeth went down that far. 
If it hadn't fallen in the cuspid bracket, it might have gone even further. And she sat down. She's still wearing the rubber band. The teeth didn't hurt. And this had moved back more than a quarter of an inch. She wasn't sore, wasn't griping about anything, just sitting there with still wearing a rubber band. And the lady, the lady that seated her came in and said, Dr. White, you better come in here and look at this, man. And so I went in and looked at it, and I calmly said, well, you don't need to wear the rubber bands anymore. And <laughs> we took this. I took some pictures of it, of course, and x-rays and everything else, and said, uh, while I was out of the room, my son was working with me at that time, and he came in and put a a flexible or kind of a wildcat wire in there, or you could have put a night doll wire to just something real flexible in it and let her go. All right, there's the way it looked from the side. I mean, this dot that had been out here somewhere now was back here. Now I, it changed it really from a a class 2 case to a class 3. It was class 2 when it started. It came in and it was a class 3. Uh, it had moved that thing back that far and she wasn't sore. Wasn't anything wasn't bothered at all. Still wearing the elastic. She obeyed me as far as wearing the elastic but didn't obey us of coming back. And so it had overdone the work. Now I'm going to take a self and I'll show you the self. And I tried to get her jaw back behind. I manipulated her jaw as much as I could. Pressure that had her open and closed. And that's as far as I could get her teeth. Now remember, these teeth had been out in front here about a a uh, quarter of an inch. They also, these teeth dropped down about that much and the arch wire f fell into the cuspid slot over there and uh, that, it didn't bring the cuspids down and so they may have held it up for a while, you see. But uh, that's what happened. And we very calmly said, you don't have to wear this rubber band anymore. <laughs> And I got all these pictures of myself and everything else. And then uh, I left the room and then they, my son put this, uh, and he didn't work, didn't work with me too much, but he was there that day. And uh, I could not manipulate her jaw back any further there. And I know how to manipulate jaws. So I've done that f for years. People will fool you. And I looked at, I took a picture of the upper uh, teeth. These teeth had not separated a bit, even though this spring pressure is in between them. They all went back. Everything went back as a group. It just moved the whole part of the, the maxilla back. Now the teeth are tipped. In other words, they... They moved back by moving the crown, but the root didn't go as far as the crown did on the teeth. And we had, from the picture up there first put, I put, I went back and I banded the second molar. And I hooked this, ran a stiff arch wire as I could in here, and we wore elastic off of this. And you remember I showed you before this was a straight line before and in this six weeks these teeth moved out to the side from class two elastics are kind of pulling at an angle so they pull these teeth out to the side uh, there now I'm taking a lot of time to show you this but uh, if you use them you need to really understand what the heck's going on with it, but they will move your teeth all over the place. 
Now this is a mirror shot here, just to get a direct view of that. So this is part of the mirror over here. So just ignore that part. I stick, you pull the jaw back and stick a mirror in there, and then you shoot the picture in the mirror. Now this is the mirror part over here. And you see that archwire fell into that cuspid slot and came down against that. Don't pay attention to this part back here now. And this is the spring that's in here, and here's where your 10 ounces of force. You push it out with 10 and back this way with 10. And that has some strange effect here. This rubber band was going from here all the way back to the second molar. And it had 12 ounces of force in it. And with the bottom arch, we had a little intruding wire on it, so we were flattening it out. And we had the second molar banded back there uh, when we let her go with that. Now there's where it went. That archwire fell into the cuspid slot. But you remember it was up above and it didn't even touch that when it was coming down. All right. We took that out. We've still got an intruding wire on this, bringing this down. Got to get this down and this will jump over. Just hooked a little wildcat wire in here and uh, got some pictures of it and this dot here you remember was out here somewhere and so all this has moved back of this portion now the roots which uh, used to be like this the crowns went back the roots went back a little bit but not much see these teeth are tilted back in here which is easy to correct everything. So we took this out and just let her go. No elastics, nothing. You just go home. And then we won't see you in another two weeks. Well, that's the way it was when she left out with that little flexible wire in it. That's the way the bottom was with the intruding arch. Now this tooth is coming back some, but you can see this archway goes out like that, and we'll pull it off of there. Now that'll straighten up on its own real easy. Okay, that's as far as she could get the teeth, as I can manipulate them back. Now, we let her go for two weeks, and she came back, and it looked like this. And this dot had come from here back to here. These teeth had straightened up. This went up, this went down, and this now is in a straight line across there. And here where these teeth were biting, we took an intruding wire out too at this time. And these teeth, the edge of these teeth was down here somewhere when we started. And that happened just, boy, just like bad. A little bit better focus on that. And you can see where the, the cuspid tooth was back into the slot behind the cuspid. It came from out here to there, but it was here. It bounced back there with nothing. I mean, we just took it out and put a little flexible wire in there, and these teeth went back up again and to where they're lined up with the cuspid. So the cuspid probably came down some and these went up some. Uh, but it lined up in a couple of weeks, man. Move that much, not sore. She didn't gripe about anything. Fine. Good fine. We've got just a single wire on the bottom of a rectangular wire. And this thing, we start out with a class 2 case. Now we have a mild class 3, but uh, now it's, uh, it's class one and it's uh, we went in and put a good strong arch wire in there and had a good rectangle wire on the bottom 
you see. And it's lined up a class one case. Interdigitated and all going back the midlines off a little bit. Not any big deal. And we followed her on and straightened this whole thing out and finished her up like that. And it finished out great. And we had some class two elastics on it. If it came out, we could have come back and put a little force on it, but I don't think we ever did. We may have corrected the midline a little bit, shifted it around that way. Yeah, I think this was, this went out uh, with a little class two on this side. So we had to finish it out with a slight class two elastic, nothing much to do. And you see this is lined back up again, these teeth are just falling back into place. And the dates are on there. We got the midline pretty well lined up. It doesn't have to because there can be a dis discrepancy in the size of the bottom or top teeth. And as long as you get a case interdigitated with the bicuspids and cuspids and molars fitting together, don't worry about the darn midline. Uh, it, it's as long as this is really interdigitated as good as you can get it. That's what you want. And you got enough overjet and overbite to get along all right, then you just don't worry about the midline because it could be a slight difference in the size of one of the front teeth. Okay, so this one came forward a little bit, so we had to wear something to put it back in here better. This, this is see the interdigitation of the bicuspid is off just a little here. The molar really needs to, this upper molar needs to come down in that groove. So this side needs a slight class 2 correction. And so we got that one a little more than class, a real strong class 2 there. All right, we took everything off the top and the midline's on and all, everything's lined up good <coughs> and we got that to where it functioned there properly now with this is a little class three over here the other one is class one good looking at the teeth they look fine no, no, the angle the torque in the upper anterior is good uh, she has some little old cavities in there and, uh, she went some of her dentists and they filled those cavities for her. And we put her in a retainer. I had the bottom off and everything. I put a retainer on her and she came back in after a week or two after being in retainer. And her TMJ was hurting. I mean, it, and I, oh my God, did we do something that caused the TMJ? She didn't have this. This is a splint Dr. Holt put in for her. She much, the joint was hurting. Oh, man, what the word did we do that caused the joint to hurt? This, this wasn't any force Go back, going back over there. We were using class 2 elastic, pulling the jaw forward and all this good stuff. And I stayed in there and talked to her till I was getting behind in these other rooms and so I left to go catch up in there and left her sitting in there. And the young lady was uh, in the room there with her. She came, ran into the room where I was. Dr. White, that lady was in a car accident and a car hit her on her side by her door and knocked her completely out of the car on the other side. I mean, <laughs> and I ask her all kind of questions uh, to find out if something had happened to her. Somebody, her boyfriend bopped her in the mouth or uh, fell on something or hit something on the jaw to cause it. 
nothing. She just sat there and no, didn't know anything. A darn car accident. So when you're questioning people like that, <laughs> say, have you been in a motor vehicle accident <laughs> or not? Uh, anyway, I sent her, she's going to be an insurance case, and I sent her to Dr. Holt to take care of that. So he put a splint in and it got okay. Also found out that several of the women in her family had joint problems. So there's a weak joint in there. So that's probably one of the chicken joints things that I'll tell you about later on <laughs> when we get into some TMJ stuff. Uh, so they put a splint on the bottom and she got all right real quick and we put her in a retainer with a bite plate on it so that it would never deepen past that point, you see. And uh, now I'm going to show you some x-rays on it. So uh, starting off, this this is when she came back. This is class class one now it's going, it's going to class one at this point that's not the one no. and here it is where we put this appliance in you can see the appliance is rigged up on that and that's where this fell into place uh she's got wisdom teeth back there and all that good stuff and here we wore this for a while and when it pulled it back we took the bone looked just perfectly fine on these teeth though they had moved uh, more than a quarter of an inch in six weeks you see uh, now finishing her up we pulled it back to this point and she didn't have room to get these teeth in so we uh, recommended removing the wisdom teeth about to get them all out and so she went in somewhere and got the wisdom teeth removed and that could have hurt the TMJ but it was a motor vehicle accident that <laughs> was all right here she is to start you see the class 2 molar relation here this bottom molar should have been out out here somewhere with the upper molar medial on the side of thing it worries me to death and uh, this is about a quarter of an inch difference in here and we rigged this thing up and she wore it six weeks too long and she came back in that's the way her teeth were so when we were pulling with a class 2 elastic and look where these teeth went to let me go back and look at the other. See where they are here? Straight up and down. And we're pulling with this class to elastic that's back on the other molar back here. And pulling on that, those teeth went out to that point like that. Now, <clears throat> we took this off and put this in and, and uh, it jumped over here in two weeks time these teeth were over the top of this with no force at all they did just went over like that now if you look at the self after we finished her these teeth came right back that's almost ideal you know and the inner inside the angle and all the good stuff on self metrics and uh if you go and do orthodontics, you have to you start off with some of the courses that are basic, and they'll teach you cephalometric analysis and figuring it out. After you've been doing it for about 15, ten or fifteen years, and you've done so many cases, you go you know you don't have to have the self tell you what to do. You know what the heck to do. And you take it, you know, for a record of it, what it is. But uh, I don't go through all that rigmarole. It's a lot of stuff, but you need to do that to start off. And you need to take selfs on your cases. They transfer out. Somebody wants to know what you're doing. Then uh, you can send the selfs with analysis on them. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go into... 
another case here. I don't want to bore you to death with this, but uh, here's a 30-year-old lady, and she's got some problems. She came in with a crowded teeth, and I'll run over this pretty quick. Good, uh, no protrusion or anything, and nice lined up face good, chin's out here good, this vertical height of the face is is good right in here, and her teeth are just messed up, but facial structure looks pretty good. All right, when you look at her models, you know a lot of things. She had lost a tooth here early in life, and so this is a 12-year molar, and a, I mean, a, yeah, 12-year molar and a wisdom tooth, leaned over in this hole, and this is a second by, first by, and the cuspid tooth back here and there leaning back, you see. And the teeth up here are fitting a kind of a class three like relationship between these molars. And she had a bad tooth right here. This bicuspid was real bad. So we're going to extract it. And uh, this is a, and we'll keep the class two. See, we'll keep it class two. Then we're going to take this cuspid and put it right back and put it in the place that's where the cuspid should go there. And we kind of open the bite, but we didn't move the front teeth forward or backward. We just kept them right, pretty much where they were. Now we put this appliance on there. And you're going, you're going to have all kind of problems on lots of different adult cases. Uh, now, looking at it from the front, these teeth look pretty good. You know, that's not no big problem here. You just got to take these cuspids back and put them back in the place back here. Now, watch what this does. This uh, plus is not just for bilateral cases, I mean, you do it unilaterally. You can pull teeth back on one side and leave them where they are on the other side. And you did some of that in this case. It's an interesting learned case. Now, she had some bad teeth where it was good uh, using the bad teeth to screw up your work. But I want to take this wisdom tooth that was rotted out over here. So we extracted that. Now, we're going to take, put this appliance on, we're going to take these four te teeth here and move them all backwards and just take them back where this tooth will move over here and this tooth will come over and put it in that slot right there. We'll bring this lateral out and line it up. And we did this with this uh, Mitchell appliance. Just to show, I mean, that needs to be done on this side, and we correct the class two here, but we kept it over on the other side. Now, looking at it from inside the mouth, and you look across the molars right here, and across them here, and across them over here. And we want to put these teeth down in this place. So this side, we moved all of these teeth. And we took out the wisdom tooth. And there's four teeth here. We moved backwards. Just backed them up far enough. And this one will drop right in place. On this side, we had a rotted out tooth here. And we had good teeth back here. So we just extracted that. Slip this one back into that place. Brought this over here to straighten the laterals up. Now, now cephalometrics isn't going to tell you all that. I mean, you, you just common sense, man. You, you just sit down there. That's what you want. You want to keep these up here where they are. And just back this up into that hole. Put that tooth. Back this whole segment up. Now, that's what. You, that's how you diagnose the darn things. Now on the bottom, this gap right here, and these teeth were leaning. 
So you're going to have to straighten these teeth up. You're going to move their roots a long way, and that's going to give you a lot of class 2 anchorage back here and bring those teeth up and close this little gap. But the roots are going to move a long way, and these roots have to kind of straighten up too, and that'll bring this forward. So uh, moving this, getting it straight is going to give you a lot of anchorage. You get some anchorage over on this side from it. And uh, we just straighten out the anterior teeth. No big problem there. So here we put this Mitchell appliance on these teeth. And over here we would wear more force. And more force in here. No, over here we didn't have to wear as much force. Because we just moved these two teeth back and left the rest of it where it was. But over here we had to move four two by cuspids and two molars back to bring that cuspid down in that hole. And we rigged up with more force over here and then less on this side. And we keep the bed line, keep these teeth, then we'll shape them up, make them look a little nicer when we finish. <coughs> now here, this is going back with that force now we've got a lot of force, a lot of resistance out here because we got to straighten these teeth out. So the roots are moving a long way, but the crown don't go very far. And you guys are just starting out with orthodontics. This will be hard to do, but uh, once you get going where you can do these easy cases, then you can get on into this. Sometimes you you look at something and you think it's pretty easy and you take you jump on it and then it <laughs> eats your lunch you know it's a, uh, you have to get some help and that's what the American Orthodontic Society does I mean if you get in problems there's some people in the American Orthodontic can help you out and tell you what you need to do and that's who you call on you don't go to the, the regular orthodontics uh, they they don't want you doing it anyway, see. Now look, remember where these molars were across. Now over here we didn't move the molars back. We saved the, uh, we just took them, let them uh, come back part of the way. But not, really didn't push them back at all, really. We put that uh, first back has been in this place where they decayed second bio was and then put the cuspid down in here over here now we're taking all of these teeth back and we've got room and get the cuspid down in here and it's got to finish it out some but look what happens when you look at it you see and this is straight right down the line now there's the elastic coming across there now this will correct class twos. If people don't wear elastic, you rig this thing up. If they don't wear the elastic, these front front teeth are going to go out like mad. Uh, and when they, I put this on a boy, I'd been working on him for a year and a half, and he wouldn't wear the darn rubber bands, and he wouldn't wear the headgear, he wouldn't wear anything, and I wasn't getting anywhere with him. And I rigged this thing up and put it on him. And boy, in about two months' time, we had the thing corrected. And I said, how did you change over so much? You kept wearing the rubber band. He said, if I took that rubber band out to eat dinner, these teeth started hurting. And these teeth were hurting. And I had to put the rubber band back, and the teeth stopped hurting. So this thing makes people wear them, except I had one little idiot that <laughs> still wouldn't wear them, and his teeth came out. And I don't know what we ever did with him. We may have put some huge springs on there or something to correct the class two. But it it makes people wear rubber bands if you want to wear that. All right. Anyway, we finished this lady out. I'm getting over time here so I'm going to run on
through this is pretty fast. All right, we got her fixed up good. Now, see these teeth have set up right, and I've got still got a little space in there. So we're moving these roots forward over here by tipping the arch wires in this area. Now, it's not quite in class one, so we're wearing a little more elastic or they're going to end up almost edge to edge out here, looks like. So now we've got that side to class one. So we brought this back further than we needed and then we'll pull this back a little bit more, close that space up and finish the case up. And we actually, this thing opened up some, so we still bringing the roots forward, just straightening it up makes it separate in there, but we kept tugging on the living thing so we got it in there and I think we're pretty well close to finishing now and we got a we left it class two see we got all the bicuspids in here and we were short of a uh, molar a short of tooth on this side see so we left it in a class two molar relation and uh, this was out up here and that's all right. It fits together in the anterior part of the mouth. This is lined up good. We've almost got that closed up. So now you look at it. It's this side back one whole bicuspid width, going back like that. Okay. Here is the. Uh, this is, she's 30 years old apparently at this, this point. This was 1987 and we have it pretty well finished out. This is where the tooth was missing and we brought it forward. And this wisdom tooth is okay. It's sitting on the, about half of a tooth back there. And over here we've got just two molars upper and two molars down on the bottom. There that is when we finished. Now this is where it was to start. You see, we had to bring these roots up like that, just which, which we did. Let's see. You see where they are there. Now they're pretty well parallel. Now that's finishing it up. Now that's finished. Now we finished this lady. Uh, 1988, I think, is here. We had her finished at that point. And she moved out of town, and later on, let's see, 1998, about 10 years later, she came back into town and brought her son. And uh, she had had some dental work done, and a tooth uh, uh, root canal done here and stuff but here it is 10 years later the things are lined up pretty much just like it was and this is 10 years after and I wouldn't look at her son until I got some uh, records on her and so then we started her son's work now here she was when we finished that's in her retainer, and then we took that all out. That was 89 when we fit. This is her upper retainer. Nothing across there. Don't, you don't need anything. And use wraparound retainers and put a bite plate or something where the lower teeth can't deepen. And I'm sorry, that's a bad picture there, but... You can see she wears her retainer. She's got a track of it in her mouth, and her teeth are just like they were. In other words, this this tooth, if you line this up, these teeth are uh, head or their back over here. These are up this side. That's the lower teeth. I didn't get the bottom ones exactly in there, but they don't even have a. Well, we have. Taking that off. 
All right, here's her picture in 98. She's a better looking woman than she was. She did something to her skin and everything when she first came in. She didn't look that good at all. Now that's the, the teeth in 98. They fit together like a glove. I mean, they, they've worn in. And that type of retention will let the teeth come together. And there's her smile. A little bit of gum showing, but not much. And that's, that's her in 98. And again, the other side. And it's held up great. Now... I didn't put a three to I didn't put a bonded wire down here and let that thing slip there slightly, but that's the only thing that happened in the ten years. Uh, this and that I'll finish this up at that point and I talked for a long time, but if you can understand that, it's it's worth it. Uh, you can handle class two cases with it.